Hi, and welcome back uh, to the series of uh, questions about DC motors. And this is question number four. Okay, so what is this question is about? It's different than the previous questions. Now the configuration, as you can see here, it's shunt. So where we have our input voltage, we have here RA and we have RF. So RA is 0.25 ohms and RF is 400 ohms. So let's see what the question is asking us to do. So here we have a shunt DC motors under full load conditions. So this is the full load conditions. And what is this full load? It's giving you details about the mechanical load. So here is different than what we have seen before. So we have here at 800 kilogram, that is your load. And you are lifting this up at a speed equal to 2.2 milliseconds. So it's a constant speed that you are rising this load up. And here's the shaft of your uh, motor. And the radius between uh, the, the load center and your motor is around 18 centimeters. The first thing here says that what is the minimum size of the motor? What is the power rating of the motor? Yeah. So if you want to do this, if you want to achieve this, if you want to carry such weight, how much is the size of the motor? So this is what we call it a sizing problem of the motor. So let's concentrate here, okay? So the, the sizing problem, basically, the key issue here is that P out, the output power that we want to calculate, is equal to T out, which is basically the torque that you apply times omega. Okay, perfect. So this is what we want to calculate. This is the size of the motor. Okay. Now we need to find the torque because we know the speed. Okay. Omega is given to us. Omega is equal to V over R. Now this is if you want to convert from a linear. Here we are given a linear speed to change this into a omega or rotational speed. You divide by the radius. That this this radius. And this will be equal to 2.2 millisecond divided by the, the, the radius, which is 0.18 meter. And this will give us 12.22 radian per second. So that's give me omega, which is here. So need, now we need to find the torque. Now, what is the torque? Torque out is equal to the force times the radius. When you apply, you have a force times the radius, it will give you the torque. But what is the force? The force basically is the force of the object that you are lifting, okay? So basically your F is mg, the mass times g, the gravitational constant. So this is equal to the 800 times the 9.81. Okay, times 0.18, which is again the radius. So this will give me what? This will give me the, the torque, which is equal to 1412.64 Newton meter. So this is your this is your torque. Okay, perfect. Now from this torque. We can find the output power. So P out is equal to this torque, which is 1412.64 times the omega, 12.22. And this will give me 17,265.6 watt. Now, if you want to find the horsepower, you divide this by 746. But this is the output power. So when you want to size your motor, or you want to buy a motor that can do this load, then this is the size of the motor that you are looking for. Okay, so this is part A. Straightforward, different, but straightforward. Now, 
if the line voltage is reduced to 160, so here the voltage is 220, we reduce this into 160 volt. What will be the speed? So if we maintain the same torque, okay, and we just change the voltage. Now, this is the first time in a shunt question, we change the voltage. Always we assume the voltage is constant, and that will make the problem different. How we approach the problem will become different. Okay. So, what we know is P out is equal to the, what we just call 17 to 65.61. So, this is the output power of your motor. Okay. Now, from this, I can find P developed which is equal to P out minus P rotational losses. But since the rotational losses are not given to us, we can ignore it. So we can assume that the PD, the developed power, is equal to the P out. So this is equal to the 17 to 65.6, which is equal to EA, the back EMF, times I. So from this, we can find this is your IA and this is your EA. Now, both EA and IA are unknown. Both of them are unknown to us. So we need another equation to solve for that. And this is basically the KVL. So taking the KVL, then your VT is equal to what? Is equal to your EA plus RA. IA. So your VT is the 220 volt equal to the EA, which I don't know, plus RA, which is 0.25 times IA. So we have here equation one and equation two. So we need to substitute one with another, and then we want to, to solve for this. Okay. So from equation one, now this has become math. We can find EA. EA is equal to 17,265.6 divided by IA. And then we will substitute in two. So I will substitute this value in equation number, number two. Okay, perfect. So let's do that. After I substitute, what I will get, so basically what I will do, I will come to this equation. I just take out EA and I substitute with this value, okay? So we will have the following equation, 2, 2, 0, IA, okay? 2, 2, 0, IA, or maybe let's, let's go backward a little bit. We will have 2, 2, 0 which is this, equal to EA, EA as we know it is equal to 17,000 to 65.6 divided by IA plus 0.25 IA, 0.25 IA. So this is the equation. I just substitute EA here. Now to solve this, I have to multiply everything times IA. So then you will have 2, 2, 0 IA equal to 17 to 65.6 plus 0.25 IA square. We can arrange this as a quadratic equation. So this is 0.25 IA square minus 220 IA plus 17,265.6 equal to zero. Okay, now we need to solve this. So can easily solve this, your IA solution for a quadratic equation, minus P plus minus P squared minus 4AC divided by 2A. So your P is equal to minus 2, 2, 0. Your A is equal to 0.25, and your C is equal to 17,265.6. So when I substitute and try to solve for this, what you gonna find you will find the following that your ia basically is equal to 2 
solutions. We have will have two solutions here, 792.9 amps or 87.1 amps. Now, this is from the math perspective. Now, we have to use our common sense of engineering. Now, we know from the previous question that that is not a typical value of an armature card, but this is more or less is more this is more suitable. So that's this is the current that we will use. And from this, you will find that the EA is equal to the 17 to 65.6 divided by IA by 87.1, which give me uh, the value which equal to 198.23, which makes sense. We know that the VT and also this from our experience, an understanding of the physics of the problem that EA will be somehow close to limit IA. If we use the other value, this one, you will find that your EA is equal to only 21.77 volt, which doesn't make sense as a back, uh, back EMF. So these are the two values for IA and for, for EA. So we found IA, we found EA were at the initial conditions, which is V equal to 0 volt. Okay, perfect. Now we want to see what will happen at the 160 volt. But before that, we need to understand a very important thing that the torque is assumed to be constant. So since the torque is constant, torque is the force times the radius. The force doesn't change, though it's the same weight, and the radius doesn't change. So from this, you can say that torque 1 is equal to torque 2. Now we know this is before and after we change the voltage. We know that the torque is basically a function of two things, the flux and the armature current. And the flux is a function of what the field current. So it's basically I F1, I A1 equal to I F2 times I A2. Now, this is the situation when VT or the voltage is equal to 220 volt. And here is the situation when V is reduced to 160. So what do we know? We know I F1 and I F2, of course. How? Your IF1 is basically the voltage divided by RF, which is 220 divided by the 400. And this will give us the IF1, which is equal to 0.55. IF2, on the other hand, is equal to the 160 divided by the 400, which is equal to the point. 0.4 amp. So we know IF1, we know of IF2, we know IA1, IA1, we just found it, which is the 87.1. From this, we can find IA2. So from this, we can find IA2 is equal to 119.76 amp. We always want to find the armature current at the new condition. But this one now, it is a bit longer than what we used to do. From this, I can find EA2, which is basically V terminal 2. Now, V terminal is a changing. Again, this is different than the previous questions. Minus IA2 times RA. So, V terminal 2, which is the 160 now, minus 119.76 times the RA, which is the point to five, and from this you will find this is equal to 130 30 volts. So now we know EA1, we know EA2. Okay, now EA is proportional to the flux times the speed, or EA is proportional of IF times N, or EA is proportional to IF times the velocity, because in revolution per minute, velocity meter per second, they are exactly the same thing, but there is only a constant to move from RPM to, to velocity. So basically, I can say that EA2, the second condition of our EA1. So this is when the VT equal to 160 volt. I will write it down here. And this is when the voltage is equal to 2 volt, the V terminal. These are the two different conditions. Is equal to 
I F two times V two divided by I F one times V one. So now we know everything. We know E A two, which is the one thirty volt. We know E A one. We found it at the beginning of the of the question, and here it is R E A. From here we found E A is equal to one ninety eight point two. Three. We know I F one and I F two. We just found them I F one and I F two, and we also know the velocity at the initial condition was two point two millisecond. So from this, everything is known to us. We can find V two and it's equal to one point nine eight millisecond, and this is expected that the velocity because we reduce the voltage, we reduce the flux. And hence, we are reducing the velocity of the, of the motor.